So a while back, I did a video uh, tasting through a Jura tasting set of their range, circa 2015. Um, and I put it up anyways. And I thought they were kind of okay. I thought they were, you know, a little basic, a little milk toast, but, you know, not certainly not terrible. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, I realized that they weren't, making that range anymore. They were making these. And they have dropped almost everything to 40%, down from 43, uh, except for the seven wood, which has been dropped to 42. Couldn't even give it 43. Um, and so I'm gonna taste through these. Um, they've been airing out for about half an hour now. So why do this? Why do this? I, I know I'm not going to give these great scores. I'm, I, I would be very, very pleased, actually, if any of these made it up to the same scoring as that, that old uh, video with the old range. Um, why do this? Because I know Jura can be good. Um, Jura Distillery, on the island of the same name, um, is it's a very, very funny distillate. It's very fermentary. It's very doughy. It's very distinctive. In, in some ways, it reminds me of um, like a more coastal Glen Scotia or something. It's got potential. It's got a high ceiling. Like I like the Jura Prophecy, which I reviewed in some previous... I'll link it up down below. The Jura Prophecy is a genuinely good malt. It's weird. It's distinctive. You're not, it doesn't taste like anything else. I've had independent bottlings of unpeated Jura from, uh, you know, circa, this was like 15 years ago, from bottlers I don't even think exist anymore. But they were good, and they were interesting, and they were distinctive. So I, I'm a little bit invested in, in this distillery. It, it can, it's got some, and I just, I have to try these. Because I have to know. I, I just have to know. So we're going to do a taste through. All right. Uh, starting off with the uh, Jura Journey. Bottled at 40%. What do they have to say about this? I have not read these in advance because I wanted to save myself the joy. A refined balance of rich fruit and gentle smoky notes from maturation in American white oak ex bourbon barrels. Bottled at 40%. No, no age statement. Let's see what we went run for. So JJ, uh, JJ, here we go. It smells like whiskey. It smells like a malt whiskey. You could get this anywhere. You could get this from any distillery in the space side. Just take a fruity malt distillate. Throw it in some American oak for a little while. So what am I getting? I am getting uh, apple, pear, vanilla, a little bit of stewed English breakfast tea, white pepper, <sighs> hello, um, some, some honey, maybe some like orange blossom honey in there. Uh, this is... I'm struggling. I'm struggling. It's it's just just those g generic, you know, malty malt notes. This could be from the space side. It could be from friggin' Taiwan. Like there is no, there's no identity to this, and it's coming from Jura, one of the most distinctive malts you know, I can think of. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, all right, I'm going to make a, make some notes to myself as far as scoring goes. It's fine. Like, I don't hate it, but it's, it's, it's so boring. Okay, let's see what happens on the palette. Maybe the palette will, on JJ will be more interesting. They're claiming smokiness. Um, 
Maybe. I mean, if it's there, it's a background character. So I'm getting, again, same mix of like stewed apples, pears, maybe some quince in there. Um, honey, vanilla, stewed breakfast tea. Maybe throw like a, a couple of leaves of lapsang souchong in there. That's the extent of the smokiness. So it's not really like peaty smoky. It's more just kind of like a, like a smoked tea kind of thing. Slightly floral, hints of grassiness. One malted milk ball thrown in there. Did I mention honey? There's some honey in there. It's fine. Like, I will take this over a glass of the current iteration of Glenfiddich. I will. It ain't bad. But it's, it's just... Where's the personality? Like this is, it's like, it's like going on a date with someone and you're trying to talk to them about music and they're just like, yeah, I don't really listen to music. Sorry. Um, I just, I'll turn the radio on sometimes. I don't really know the songs or the artists. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a burger. It's, it's that guy, you know? Um, what am I going to give this? Seventy nine points. Seventy nine points. This is again, I don't hate it, I can drink it, but <sighs> why would you buy this over anything anything else? Moving on. Uh, this is the Jurat age ten years, ten year old, single malt scotch whiskey. 40%. Uh, it is a rich and rounded balance of subtle, smoky notes with a sweet sherry cask finish. Oh, goody. Uh, wow, okay. Here we go. Because everything's got to have a sherry finish now. Jesus, come on. So it's it's a little more interesting. Um, again, lots of multi notes, lots of apple, pear. I, I am struggling here. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry for you to watch this. Uh, there's some more interesting honeys. There's some Manuka honey happening. I am getting some some limited sherry notes. There's a little bit of, of uh, golden raisin, fig, um, Swisser sweets, which is kind of one of my giveaway notes for sherry, uh, white pepper, stewed English breakfast tea again. Um, there's a little there's one fun thing about this, which is a little bit of like um like a curry note. There's a little like you know green Thai curry thing going on in here. Yeah, some, or maybe like some spicy noodles noodles or something. But overall. It, it it smells like a malt with a very very basic sherry overcoat that's and that's kind of it on the palate better better more interesting um now we're getting some character this is okay this is good this is a step forward um 
Let me try this again. So there is a lot of that that those, that those sort of basic multi notes are going on. Um, <clears throat> uh, apple, pear, honey, white pepper, vanilla, um, all that stuff. Stewed tea. But in tandem with that, particularly like rising on the mid palate, is uh, that curry note is 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 still there, but it's almost developing into a. Um, this is going to be really obscure, but like a, a, like an oxidative wine note. So fino sherry is the first thing that comes to mind, but it's not really fino. It's more like some of the um, some of the chardonnays and sauvignon based wines you will get actually from the Jura region in France. So way, way, way east in France, um, right next to Switzerland, you will, you will have these wines which are aged, they're not fortified, but they're aged in an intentionally oxidative manner. And they start to develop these, these fun, nutty, almost curry notes. And I'm kind of getting a little bit of that on there. We're not like in full-blown Von Jean territory Von John is one of those wines, the most famous. But, but yeah, it, it tastes like a good twenty dollar, slightly oxidative, Sauvignon Chardonnay kind of blend. But it's really only like a like a color note. It's really only there. In like a sort of supporting actor sort of role. It kind of makes this for me, but it's it's like it's playing. It, it's secondary to those like just friendly, approachable, multi notes. Interestingly, I'm not really getting a lot of stereotypical sherry notes on the palate here. Um, black pepper, maybe. Uh, interesting. One more time. Little hints of like cased plum flavored tobacco in there, maybe, but that's about it. Uh, this is better. This is a better malt. Um, it still feels like it's 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 basic and it's just the forty percent is is hurting it. Like the finish is clipped, the mouthfeel is not great. Um. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna be kind to this. I'm gonna give this. Uh, eighty two plus, eighty two plus, for the Jura ten. That plus is is entirely for that fun, you know, journey into oxidative wine on the palate. Moving on to the one I am most worried about, Jura seven wood. Again, no age statement. Um, but bottled at 42%, so that's a step forward. Let me get this a little bit more in this glass. All right. Uh, influenced by seven select French and American oak barrels for a rare balance and depth with a hint of smoke. They really are playing up this hint of smoke thing. I'm getting nothing, nothing smoke-wise on this. Not as much as the old superstition or, or certainly not the old prophecy. Um, but I guess, you know, they're trying to sell to Americans or whatever, and Americans are dead certain that scotch is smoky, even when it's friggin' Glenlivet. Um, bottled in, oh God, tiny print, bottled in American White Oak X Bourbon. I'm not even going to try. Uh, I'll just find something and copy paste it down below. I, I don't care. All right, let's try this. Jura 7 Oak, here we go. It's modern oak forward malt. That's all it is. It's just like oaky, 
Okie oak. Okie oak. That's most of what I'm smelling. <sighs> Jesus. It's, it's so just kind of vague and... Sorry, let me try to get... Let me, I will try to get some notes on the table. I will try to get some notes on the table. Dried fruit. Lots of dried fruit. All the dried fruit. Dried cherry. Uh, golden raisins. Uh, prunes, figs. Black pepper. <sighs> like dried orange. Um, lots of tea. Black tea. Little oolong tea. It 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 smells like a premium whiskey. You hand this to, you know, a boomer who drink who drinks this kind of thing by the gallon. They're going to be very happy with this. They're going to think it's a nice smooth scotch. Um, On the palate, oh. good lord. Um, I can't be sure about this. My sense is this is pretty darn young. Um, the mouth length just completely disappears for me and my molars. Like, it just ends right here. There's nothing happening back beyond my teeth. Like, it, it just disappears. God, oh my... There's a lot of... There's a lot of oak just... Chew on some hardwood, uh, some toasted hardwood or something. Throw a couple of figs and prunes and raisins and dried cherries, dried orange slices into your mouth. Stuff all that in there. And then l imagine it like slow, like not even slowly, like, like rather quickly disintegrating as it's all in there. That's kind of the taste of this. Um... It feels like it's falling apart as I drink it. God almighty. Um, the Lapsang Shushong is back. That is my... That's what I'm holding on to um, as its redeeming factor. Uh, oh. Stew, stewed English breakfast tea again, some honey notes again, a couple of malted milk balls. Once you're past the the weird oak storm, there's really just not a lot going on here. I was hoping the 42%, the, that extra two would give this a better finish, better mouthfeel, but it really doesn't. It's just, it's just, it's just so lame. <sighs> All right, what am I gonna score this? Do I like this more than than the JJ? Let's. I, the ten year old is way better. The ten year old is is the class act here by miles. I'm gonna give this the same score as the JJ. Um, 79 points for the seven wood. It's got more stuff in there, but it just feels like kind of a mess. Um, the JJ, the the journey, the I'm gonna call it the JJ. Uh, the JJ is very very straightforward. It's very basic, by the numbers, simple, but it's just. It, it, it nails that kind of generic malt character, 
Whereas the seven would just, yeah, just form wise, even though it's got a little bit more going on in terms of flavors, it feels like kind of a mess. It feels like it's just tripping all over itself. Um, yeah, uh, I hate to say it, but this is kind of what I was expecting. So 79 for the JJ, 79 for the seven wood and the, uh, and your winner today with 82 plus is the Jura 10 year old. Um, and there we are. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Like this is one of, actually, I know exactly what to say. Hold on one second. Hold on. I'm going to go get something. Bear with me. Because I had a friend over a little bit earlier, and I was tasting them out on this with Shag 18. Um, Tobermory Distillery used to be regarded as one of the poorest distilleries in Scotland. It has a very had a very very distinctive character in that kind of early to mid 90s distillate and it was very poorly presented by its um by its owners and they decided to change that they improved the quality of what they were making and improved the bottling and now stuff like this is one of the champions among the whiskey nerds which means now they're able to sell more of it and hey charge more money for it and have made the brand kind of a success. Tobermory and Lecheg both. Um, no reason at all why Jura couldn't do that. No reason. We know Peter Jura is good. We know regular Jura is good when it's had enough time in a good cask. It hasn't just been hate fucked by Oak. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't know what to say. Like like this is again. I know there aren't a whole lot of independent bottlings of Jura floating around. There aren't a lot of good bottlings, period. But if you can find one, try it, because it's an incredibly distinctive, weird kind of malt. And you could someone who cared could do a lot with it. So, so yeah, someone, at, someone needs to do an intervention at White and McKay. White and McKay own a couple of malts like these like they've got Dalmore which can be fantastic when well presented they've got Fetter Cairn which is also weird and distinctive and can be fantastic when it's well presented um and they've got Jura and also uh Tandavolin, which can be okay sometimes um Anyways, like, point is, like, they're they're just I don't know why they're not doing anything with these these incredible, you know, distilleries they have they have at their fingertips, and they're making they're putting out stuff like this. I mean, Dalmore is, is gets the best presentation of the bunch, and it's still just miles be, behind where uh, the best distilleries of out there right now are are are, are putting their stuff. So, yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Sorry for a downer today. Um, go buy Lecheg 18 year old, I guess. <laughs> and cheers. Or old bottles of Jura Prophecy, if you can find them. See you later, and cheers.